there is universal frustration in this country, much of it I actually think justified, that is raging at a political establishment that centers corporate interests, billionaires, and puts their needs ahead of the needs of working Americans. Joy Reid and AOC on the same show. This is definitely one for the books. They're tackling the surprising question of how some voters ended up supporting both AOC and Trump. It's a conversation you won't want to miss. And we know that we can either channel this righteous rage because there are people whose SNAP was cut off, their child tax credits were cut off, but they're seeing people like Elon Musk getting tax breaks and kissing up to Donald Trump in order to do but so. But they vote for, then why vote for Elon Musk and Donald Trump? And I think that, of course, is the question. It makes no sense. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. I think we're still in a process of going through the data. It's important to say that. Yes. And I actually think that it's important to say that the people who are rushing to to say, let me give you my grand theory oh, of what's and going saying, on right now. The problem now, is you went too woke. Sorry, Kamala Harris was running with Liz Cheney at her side. If you, she wasn't going quote if, unquote woke. If we had an election on November 5th and November 6th, you've got an answer. Right. Don't listen to those people. I, I agree. All of this debate that people are talking about with this woke thing, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's because we care about trans people, and that's why. And by the way, a only Donald Trump cared about trans people right. because he was the one running under thirty million dollars worth of ads. The Harris campaign said nothing about this issue. That's right. That's right. And listen, the ads. It's not to even deny the fact that these ads were effective in certain areas. What I think people are paying too much attention to is the first half of that ad, mm -hmm. which says Kamala Harris is, or that said Kamala Harris is for they them. Mm -hmm. Everyone's focusing on that. They're not focusing on the second half of that ad where he said, Donald Trump is for you. Let me know in the comments what you think about the conversation between Joy Reid and AOC. Do you agree with their points or not? I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's heartbreaking, actually. It, it, is, it is heartbreaking. And people may want to take like a, a kind of vengeful stance about this, but it is genuinely heartbreaking. And we haven't even gotten to Tulsi Gabbard potentially having access to national security information. And Russia loves it, loves her. And I actually think almost more than Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard's appointment yeah. is devastating. And Tulsi Gabbard's nomination, as much as she says that she's an anti-war person, she's not. Yeah. She supports very pro-war individuals including abroad. in syria and let's be very clear <laughs> yeah. a tulsi gabbard nomination is yeah. a pro-war nomination yes. globally At point blank period the frustration they're pointing out about the political system is valid sure but the way they're framing the solutions or blaming the outcomes doesn't hold up entirely they're essentially saying that voters are being irrational by supporting people like trump or musk because it doesn't align with their interests but here's the thing Maybe those voters aren't as confused as AOC and Reid think. A lot of people see Trump and Musk as d disruptors. And let's face it, the establishment hasn't done much to earn trust lately. Democrats love to talk about how they care about working class people, but then they fail to deliver tangible results. Why wouldn't voters look for an outsider who promises to shake things up? Instead of blaming voters or writing them off as misguided, maybe AOC and Reid should focus on why their own messaging isn't landing. On the woke argument, they're dismissing it way too quickly. Cultural issues clearly matter to voters, and pretending they don't is tone deaf. The fact that Trump's ads resonated with so many people isn't just about economic concerns. It's also about cultural identity. If Democrats keep ignoring that and chalking it up to distractions, they'll keep losing ground. As for the Tulsi Gabbard criticism, it feels like they're just throwing everything they can at her without much substance. Yes, her foreign policy views might not align with theirs, but calling her a pro-war candidate feels like a stretch when she's consistently positioned herself as anti-interventionist. The Russia angle also feels like an overplayed card that gets thrown at anyone they don't like. If they want to criticize her, they should focus on specific policies instead of vague accusations. In the end, 
Their argument comes off as dismissive of voters and overly focused on blaming the other side. Instead of critiquing Trump or Musk supporters, maybe they should take a hard look at why their approach isn't working and why their policies aren't connecting with the people they claim to represent. It's not enough to point fingers. They need to offer real solutions that resonate.